I greet you and welcome you to the lesson. Today, we continue with the subject corporate governance and ethics. The last session, we covered topic number six, which is governance of risk. Today, we are moving on to the next chapter, which is environmental, social, and corporate governance framework, popularly known as the ESG framework. In this chapter, we are going to cover 10 subtopics, which include one, environmental protection, two, the triple bottom line, three, social audit, four, sustainability, five, diversity, six, corporate reputation and image, seven, corporate social responsibility, that is six, then seven is shareholder and stakeholder relations, eight, Stakeholder rights, interests, and obligations. Nine, stakeholder dispute resolution. Ten, the dynamics of institutional investors. We will be covering a chapter, sub chapter, one at a time. But first of all, we ought to define the ESG framework environmental, social, and corporate governance framework. What is the meaning of the environmental, social, and corporate governance framework. Now, candidates, the ESG framework is a set of standards and criteria used to measure and report a company's performance on environmental, social, and governance factors. So that is to say, that ESG is a set of standards and criteria. And these standards and criteria are used to measure and report a company's performance on social, environmental, and governance factors. It provides a structured approach for companies to assess and disclose the impact on the environment, their relationships uh, with the employees, the relationships with customers, the relationships with the communities, and the effectiveness of their corporate governance practices. That is the meaning of the ESG framework. The ESG framework. And this framework has the following ESG framework are the following components, the key components. Now, the key components of the ESG framework, one is environmental. Environmental. The environmental component as you can see here environmental is the first component and the environmental component encompasses a company's uh, impact on the natural world including its uh, carbon emissions energy usage waste management, resource conservation, uh, pollution prevention efforts, and so on. You understand? The environmental encompass, uh, component encompasses um, the, the company's impact on <clears throat> the natural world. The company's impact on the natural world, the company's impact on the natural world. And I've mentioned things like waste management, carbon emissions, issues to do with the uh, Pollution prevention, pollution 
pollution prevention efforts, conservation prevention, pollution prevention efforts. We have conservation um, energy uses and so on. That is the environmental component. Do you understand? The second component is the social component. Social component. Now, the social component involves a company's relationship with its employees, involves a company's relationship with its employees, customers, and so on. Involves a company's relationship with its employees, uh, the uh, suppliers, the communities, communities, suppliers, and the rest of the stakeholders. It covers issues such as um, labor practices, issues such as human rights, uh, diversity and inclusion, product safety, community engagement, and so on. That is the social component. The third component is governance. Governance component is the third component. And this component refers to how a company is managed and controlled or overseen, including its board structure, the executive uh, compensation, shareholder rights. Uh, we have things to do with ethical practices, uh, risk management processes, and so on. This involves how a company is managed and controlled governance. Corporate governance is simply the way in which a company is managed and controlled. And the ESG framework candidates, you can see, has three main components. Environmental component, social component, and the governance component. So this framework can be used by companies to do many things, like assessing and managing risks, identifying opportunities, enhancing transparency and, trans and, trans and, uh, and, and accountability, also improving decision-making and driving positive impact. So the ESG framework can be used by companies, number one, to manage and assess risks. And that is done by identifying and mitigating the ECG related risks, such as regulatory changes, reputational damage, the supply chain, uh, and so on. The second way in which the ESG framework can be used is identifying opportunities. This is done by discovering new business opportunities such as um, uh, investing in renewable energy, uh, developing sustainable products, improving employee engagement, and so on. The third way is through enhancing transparency and accountability. And that is done through disclosing um, uh, ESG performance to the stakeholders by building trust and also attracting responsible investors. The fourth way is through improving decision making. The ESG 
by companies to improve decision making which can be done by integrating the ESG factors into strategic planning and investment decisions. Then lastly, the ESG model can be used by companies to drive positive impact and that can be done through contributing to a more sustainable and equitable society. So these are the three components of the ESG model. Now having introduced the chapter, let's now move on to the first subtopic of this chapter, which is uh, environmental protection. Environmental protection is the first subtopic. Environmental protection. Environmental protection. Now, environmental protection is a critical component, uh, component of the ESG framework. And the framework encourages companies to integrate environmental considerations into their business strategies and operations to minimize negative impacts and contribute to sustainable future. Protecting the environment. And environmental protection candidates has various aspects. All right. So let's highlight some of the aspects. Aspects of environmental protection. Aspects of environmental protection. Now the first aspect of environmental protection is natural resource conservation. natural resource conservation. Now, natural resource conservation can be looked at from various aspects as well. The environment can be protected through conserving natural resources like water management, water management. This efficient use and conservation of water resources, reducing water pollution and also promoting responsible water stewardship. Two, energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is a way to conserve natural resources. This means investing in energy efficient technologies, reducing energy conservation, uh, consumption, and also exploring renewable energy sources. Waste management is the third way to conserve natural resources, waste management. This involves implementing effective waste management practices. It involves minimizing waste generation, promoting recycling and reuse, and ensuring safe disposal of hazardous waste. Waste management. Four, sustainable sourcing sustainable sourcing can be achieved through procuring raw materials and resources in a responsible manner considering environmental impact and ethical sourcing practices so that's the first aspect of environmental protection the second aspect of environmental protection is Climate change mitigation. Number two, climate change mitigation. Climate change mitigation. Now, climate change mitigation can be achieved through a greenhouse gas emissions reduction. 
green house gas emission reduction can be achieved through greenhouse gas emission reduction reduction of greenhouse gas emissions that's one way to mitigate climate change and that can be done through setting targets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions adopting low carbon technologies and also investing in renewable energy projects the second way in which climate change may be mitigated is through carbon footprint reduction carbon footprint reduction carbon footprint reduction can be achieved by measuring and reducing the carbon footprint operations uh, by reducing the, uh, the, the carbon footprint uh, products and services. We are moving on to the third way in which climate change can be mitigated. Climate risk assessment. Climate risk assessment. This means identifying and assessing the company's exposure to climate related risks such as extreme weather events and also developing adaptation strategies that is climate risk assessment so these are three ways in which climate change can be mitigated then the third aspect of environmental protection is through biodiversity con conservation biodiversity biodiversity conservation and that can be possible by protecting ecosystems number one protecting ecosystems biodiversity conservation can be made possible through protecting ecosystems protecting ecosystems that means taking measures to protect and restore natural habitats and ecosystems impacted by a company's operations two sustainable land use sustainable land use that involves implementing sustainable land management practices to minimize environmental degradation and uh, biodiversity loss three promoting biodiversity promoting biodiversity now that can be done by supporting conservation efforts and initiatives that protect endangered species and promoting the biodiversity biodiversity conservation can be done through protecting ecosystems sustainable land use and promoting biodiversity promoting the biodiversity the fourth aspect of environmental protection is pollution prevention pollution prevention can be achieved through air and water pollution by implementing measures to reduce air and uh, water pollution from industrial usage or processes and waste disposal air and air and water pollution these are the aspects of uh, pollution prevention preventing air pollution and water pollution 
It is also prevention of soil contamination. Prevention of soil contamination. That is preventing soil contamination through proper waste management and responsible use of uh, chemicals and fertilizers. There is also the aspect of noise pollution. Prevention of noise pollution. That means taking steps to minimize noise pollution from operations, especially in residential areas. In residential areas. So, these are four aspects of environmental protection. Number one is natural and resource conservation. Number two, climate change mitigation. Number three, biodiversity conservation. Then lastly, pollution prevention. And we have identified how the four aspects can be achieved. Now let us now discuss the benefits of prioritizing environmental protection. Benefits of prioritizing environmental protection. Benefits of prioritizing environmental protection. Now, the first benefit, obviously, is regulatory compliance. Regulatory compliance. Adhering to environmental regulations helps companies avoid legal and financial penalties. You understand? By protecting the environment, companies adhere to regulatory uh, requirements. And when companies adhere to regulatory requirements, then they minimize the chances of legal and financial penalties. Two, resource efficiency. Resource efficiency. Resource efficiency. Now, resource efficiency means implementing sustainable practices which can lead to significant cost savings through reduced resource um, consumption and waste generation. The third benefit is to do with reputation of the brand. Brand reputation or company image. Demonstrating environmental responsibility enhances a company's reputation and brand image, attracting environmentally conscious consumers and investors. Four, resilience to climate change. Resilience to climate change. Now, taking proactive measures to mitigate climate change risks can help companies adapt to changing environmental conditions and secure their long-term viability. Right? Five positive social impact. Positive social impact. Contributing to environmental uh, protection benefits local communities, ecosystems, and the overall well being of the society. So these are five benefits of environmental protection. The first benefit 
is in relation to regulatory compliance, number two, resource efficiency, number three, brand image, number four, resilience to climate change, then lastly, positive social impact. Mm -hmm. Positive social impact. So that is uh, the end of the lesson. In this lesson, we introduced the chapter Environmental, Social and Corporate Governance Framework. We started by defining an ESG framework. We've outlined the components of the ESG framework, which is which involve or include the environmental component, the social component, and the governance. We've gone ahead to discuss environmental protection. We've stated in this lesson that there are four aspects of environmental uh, uh, protection. One is natural resource conservation. We discuss ways in which the um, natural resources can be conserved. One is through water management. Two is through energy efficiency. Number three, waste management. And four, sustainable sourcing. The second aspect of environmental protection is climate change mitigation. We've discussed three ways in which the climate change may be mitigated. One is greenhouse gas emission reduction. Number two, carbon footprint reduction. Number three is climate risk assessment. The fourth aspect is biodiversity and conservation. We outlined uh, protecting ecosystems, sustainable land use, and promoting biodiversity as ways through which the uh, biodiversity can be conserved. Then the last aspect is pollution prevention. We have seen how air and water pollution can be uh, prevented, how soil contamination can be prevented, and noise pollution. That marks the end of the lesson. I will end the lesson by reading to you today's assignment on environmental, social, and corporate governance framework. One, what are the most effective strategies for reducing a company's carbon footprint and greenhouse gas emissions? Two, how can organizations promote sustainable resource management and reduce waste throughout their operations? Three, what role can businesses play in protecting biodiversity and conserving natural habitats? Four, how can companies assess and mitigate the environmental impacts of their supply chains? Five, what are the challenges and opportunities associated with transitioning to renewable energy resources? What are the challenges and opportunities associated with transitioning to renewable energy sources? That is the end of the lesson. In our next lesson, we are going to study the triple bottom line. Bye.